In this video, we're going to look at modified duration, the second part of the uh, sections on duration. This uh, section on duration has two parts. First part was Macaulay duration, which was in the last learning video. So this is modified duration, a little bit of a tweak to uh, Macaulay duration. Okay, so let's look at uh, our situation. This is generally we have a time for a, a, a timeline of, of payments, a set of payments, and we look at taking a duration of the set of payments, either the Macaulay duration or the modified duration. The Macaulay duration we sat, we, we talked about in the last learning video. Uh, Symbolically, it's represented this way, and if you expand out the summations there, in the, uh, the denominator, you just have the present value of the payments, and in the numerator, you take the time at which the payment is made times the amount of the payment, and then discount that. And so uh, the numerator, you have a, in the sum and you have a t times c, cap c sub t times v to the t. In the denominator, you just have the present value of the payment, so you're just taking each payment, cap c sub t, and discounting it by multiplying by v to the t. Okay, so now uh, this is the Macaulay duration, what I have written down there, the expressions that I have written down to find the Macaulay duration. Uh, let's look at the denominator. Just let's focus on the denominator for just a second. That's, as I said before, that's just the present value of the payments. Now what I want to do is instead of using V notation, I want to use, uh, I want to use I's instead of V's. And so uh, the V is the periodic discount factor. Let's use an I, uh, the uh, uh, periodic effective interest rate. So the V is a 1 over a 1 plus I or 1 plus I to the minus 1. So just substitute in a 1 plus I to the minus 1 for each of the V's. And this is the expression that we would get uh, as as for the denominator, uh, you know, as an expression involving I's. So I'm going to denote this expression as a cap P of I. So cap P of I is the, pres is the present value function as a function of I as the function of interest rate. And I'm also, again, I mentioned to you before, in most of these problems you're going to be talking about bonds. And so the, the, the present value of the payments for a bond is just the price of the bond. So I can think of this as just the price function. Sometimes you'll hear me say that. So I'll say the present value function or I'll say the price function. And I'm thinking of it as a function of I of the interest rate. If you look at the expression that I have in red, that I just highlighted in red, uh, that's, that's what the denominator is equal to. That's the present value. And because I've got V's in that expression instead of I's, I could think of that as the present value function as a function of V, but I don't want to, I don't want to do that. I don't want to think of it that way. And, um, there's just some mathematical reasons why we don't think of it that way. So I'm going to cross that out. I don't want to think of it as a, I don't want to think of the denominator as the present value as a function of V. I want to think of it as the present value as a function uh, as a function of I. Okay. Now I want to take. Uh, let's look at taking the derivative of that function, that present value function. So I'm looking at p prime of I. So uh, take it's just a, a pretty basic derivative there of a uh, pretty basic expression to take a derivative of. For instance, the first term, I would bring the minus 1 down. That would be minus 1 times a cap C sub 1 times a 1 plus I to the minus 2 and so forth. So that's the expression that I would get for, uh, for the derivative of, um, of cap P. Notice that uh, a couple of things I wanted to point out. And uh, one is that notice that uh, that derivative is going to be negative. You got to, uh, all the cap C's are going to be positive values. Uh, all, and the I is a, you know, I is an interest rate. It's one plus I is going to be positive. All that stuff is positive because of these minus signs, minus one and then minus two times the second, uh, the rest of the second term, minus three times the rest of the third term. That's going to be a negative value. And that should make sense because I think we've talked before about uh, about bond pricing uh, as a function of the interest rate. When we were talking about callable bonds, for instance, I think we talked about this this sort of uh, this inverse relationship between the uh, yield rate that you buy a bond at. Uh, versus the price of the bond. As the yield rate goes up, the price goes down. Now, why is that? 
uh, again, I'm thinking of bonds. Let's just think of a bond. If you buy a bond, if I bought a bond to yield 5%, say, I bought a bond to yield 5%, there's a certain price associated with that yield rate of 5%. What does that price represent? That, that price represents the value at time zero that I need to pay or that, that I need to have so that when I earn 5% on, on that amount, on that price, if I accumulate it at 5% and then pay off the coupons, each uh, accumulate it for one period at 5%, pay a coupon. Take the remainder, accumulate it at 5%, pay off the second coupon. Continue that pattern. When I get to the last coupon and I've accumulated it and I pay that last coupon, I have exactly enough to pay the redemption value. Exactly enough to pay the redemption value. And then uh, I, I, everything is even. We're all square. So the price is the amount that I would have to have in order to accumulate it with a 5% interest rate in order to make all the payments. So if you bought the bond to yield 6%, that means you're going to get a 6% interest rate. You don't need to have as much money as I would have to have if I'm only earning a 5% interest rate. If I earn a 5% interest rate, I have the set amount of money that I need so that when I accumulate those that amount, I am have exactly enough to pay the coupons and the redemption value. If you're earning a 6% interest rate, you don't need as much, so your price would be lower. So you're, when you buy a bond to yield 6%, you have a lower price than if you buy a bond to yield 5%. As the interest rate goes up, the price is going to come down. What does that mean? That means the price is a decreasing function of the interest rate. And if it's decreasing, the derivative is negative. So the cap P is a decreasing function of, cap, uh, of I. And so that's, uh, and, and it's captured here in mathematically, it's captured by recognizing that P prime of I is negative. So uh, that's, you know, mathematically, you know, from calculus, uh, decreasing functions the, uh, have a negative derivative. That's why the derivative is negative here. The other thing that I want to kind of point out here is that uh, if you look at the, um, uh, well, okay, so first of all, first of all, let's, uh, let's multiply through by a negative on this last equation. And so when I multiply through by a negative, the expression I get on the right-hand side is a 1 times cap C sub 1 times a 1 plus i to the minus 2 and so forth. And that's almost equal to the numerator in the MACD expression. Uh, the only thing I'm, uh, I'm off by just a factor of 1 plus i. Uh, the, the, for instance, the first term in the numerator is a 1 times cap C sub 1 times v. What I have is a 1 times cap C sub 1 times a v squared in the expression defining the negative of p prime. And so what I'm going to do is let me multiply both sides of this last expression by a 1 plus i. And then what I get on the right-hand side is exactly the numerator for the, uh, for the MACD expression. And so what I, what, I, what I have then is in that the MACD is, think of the MACD above as the numerator divided by the denominator. The numerator is what I have right here is the negative of the derivative of cap P times a 1 plus i. And then the denominator is just cap P sub i. So that's, uh, uh, so, so I, I can relate the, the present value function to the Mac Macaulay duration this way. And what we do is we define the modified duration to be just that, just the, the part of, of this last expression, just the negative of the derivative of cap P uh, divided by cap P. So that's the modified duration of a set of payments. That's, that's how it's defined. Um, again, once again, I'd like to point out that if you look at the numerator on the mod D, what's defining mod D, the numerator is the negative of P prime. That negative in front is needed because P prime itself is going to be negative. So the negative is needed in front of that so that the result is a, is a, positive, uh, is a positive value. Okay, so let me capture all this information. Let's kind of clean up the slide a little bit. Uh, let's go back to uh, just first the definition of, of MACD. That's the definition of MACD. And then we define the present value function or the price function as a function of I to be, to be this expression. Define that way then the MACD ends up being this minus P prime of I times 1 plus I over P of I. We define the modified duration to be this negative of P prime, the negative of P prime of I divided by P of I. 
And when we do so, we get this relationship that the MACD is equal to the MOD times 1 plus I, which is equivalent to saying that the MOD D, if I divide both sides of the, uh, uh, of the bottom left equation, divide both sides by 1 plus I, and you'll see that the MOD D is the MACD times V. So uh, that's, uh, uh, that's a, a tweak, a little way we kind of tweak the Macaulay duration to get the modified duration. Um, and uh, most problems, I just want to make this last comment, I tend to, when I'm asked to calculate a modified duration, I tend to calculate a, uh, my first thought process is to calculate the Macaulay duration first and then use the fact, this last equation, that the modified duration is the Macaulay duration times V. So typically that's how I would calculate modified duration in, in these problems. Okay, so we'll look at some examples in, in the next few videos. I'll see you then.